So we're out here in the middle of the global pandemic, and so we're having to shoot a lot of this footage when the buildings are closed. But this is the old Sunnyvale Courthouse, the courthouse that litigants had to go through when they were getting divorced or having a custody case in Silicon Valley prior to the new courthouse being built in 2016. And so most of my sources came from this courthouse from the time that I was here from 2012 to 2016 in both Judge Grilly and Judge Towery's courtrooms. About caption rights, there's literally a whole section, there might even be a whole fucking book, but there's at least, you know, a section about caption writing, how important caption writing is, okay? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like obituaries, it's misleading. Well, how hard can a caption be? It's only a couple sentences under a photo within a story, you know? And it's like obituaries are generally just super short. They sum up someone's life in a couple paragraphs. So it turns out there's an art to that too. And you don't really realize that until you get into writing and into journalism. You go, oh yeah, you know what? It is hard to write an obituary. Oh yeah, it is hard to write a photo caption. And when you're a freelancer and you turn in a story with photos that either you took or their photographer took, you are told to write the caption because you're familiar with the story, you're familiar with the photo. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, and and then you learn when you're trying to write a caption. You go, oh yeah, and then you keep tweaking it, and you and you realize it's important because a lot of people just look at the pictures and read the caption. If they're flipping through a, a an alt weekly, you know, they might just see a, a photo and then read the caption, and then that might uh, draw them into the story and then read the whole story. So, in looking at this courthouse today. I came up with the greatest caption of all time for a particular story that we've discussed before. The photo is this door with the crime scene tape on it, of course. And on the inside, you can see it's also chained up and, and literally handcuffed. There's a handcuff on there holding this door. So if you could get that picture. So the pictures of this courthouse door. And what the caption says is, and this will tip you off to what the story's about. The caption says is, this is the courthouse entrance during a pandemic. This is also the same courthouse entrance to a vexatious litigant. Yeah, I realized that, uh, you know, as everybody's flipping out about access to the courts, I know exactly what this is. And you know, like. the article says now pandemic ends eventually. For a vexatious litigant, the, 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 the pandemic will end and the courthouse door will open up. But to a vexatious litigant, that door never opens up. It's an eternal pandemic for them in terms of accessing the courts. So I met so many people here throughout the years from 2012 to 2016 before this courthouse was moved to downtown San Jose. And I remember where I was when I met everyone. I remember the court clerks that gave me information about David Yamasaki stealing palm trees from the courthouse landscaping. I remember the litigants crying over what was happening to them and their children in the family court. And I remember Judge Grilly and how incompetent she seemed. And I also remember Judge Towery, which we're gonna talk about later, but he started here in this courthouse as well in 2011 after he was appointed to the bench. And I remember specifically this area because I met Joanna Sullivan. She was a doctor at the VA hospital in Palo Alto. And she told me about Brad Baugh and his representation of her during her divorce case in front of Judge Grilly. So this was the area that we talked afterwards. And each time I see one of these areas, all those conversations and memories just come back. And I remember what everybody said about Judge Grilly. And I also just remember what it felt like for all of us in this courthouse as these attorneys were engaged in what was clearly racketeering activity. 
And I'm really, really proud that all of our work has come together to expose a private judging scandal that has resulted already in pre-filing motions with several law firms preparing RICO violation lawsuits against these attorneys and several of the judges. And it all arises from this courthouse in Santa Clara. And this is the Sunnyvale Courthouse, and this is where it all began back in 2012. And for so many other parents, it began in the early 90s. Val Valerie Houghton made an order that my son couldn't call me by, or I couldn't call my son by his Russian name, nor could I send any Russian food, which usually was a caviar sandwich in his lunchbox. I couldn't send that because it was smelly Russian food. me that here is a very beautiful building. In this building, we have provided for at least 22 of our guests. And your approval, and that you agree with me that it is a very beautiful building. In this building, we have provided for at least 22 of our justice partners. It is our hope that it will help to improve access to justice and to strengthen the relationships with our justice partners. This building allows us to consolidate many of Santa Clara County's collaborative courts, in which our judges have worked tirelessly and supported for many, many years. And as one of my last additional assets for the justice, I am very grateful for the opportunity to express to you our voice of appreciation for all that you do, for your unwavering support, and to let you know that when you have concerns, that we hear you and we are listening. We will do our best to always provide justice for you, your clients, and all court users. Happy holidays, and thank you. Do you remember when that bailiff, you had done a media request in my case, and that bailiff was shutting you down for taking pictures of the flag out here? Can you show me where that was? Where I was? Yeah, where were you? I was in the parking lot. In that parking lot. You were in the parking lot? Yeah, I was shooting with a, with a you know, a long lens, a telephoto lens. There's and you were shooting towards the, the courthouse? Yeah, this is the flagpole. The deputy was here in the morning, opening up, raising the flags. And I was way back over there, shooting her, raising the flag. And that was Grilly's bailiff, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You know she married Deputy Oliveri, right? Yeah, that's what I heard.
Sí, está por ti. This courthouse was July 25, 2013, and I remember it well because it was my 48th birthday, and I had been in mediation with my husband and not getting a lot of progress done, and things started to not add up. So I knew that I had a hearing scheduled. I didn't know what that meant, and I came to this courthouse for the first time, and it didn't look exactly like it looked on TV. And I went to the hearing, Judge Gurley was at the hearing, and I told her that I believed that my husband was stealing money and that we were in mediation, and she told me to get a lawyer. And so I did. I hired Travis Karpalka's firm because one of my probate writers referred me to him thinking that he was a good guy. Turns out, not so much. But this is where I spent my 48th birthday in 2013. I am trying to do my job. Stop recording. I heard you. Okay. Stop recording. I heard you. You guys doing? What are you guys doing? Stop it. Stop it. What are you guys doing? Stop it. Stop it. Stop messing with me. You're helping me. Don't turn the phone off. Don't turn the phone off. You're going to wait. You're turning the phone off. What are you guys doing? You just broke my finger. You broke my finger. Sit down. What the fuck is wrong with you people? This is no way to be treated at a courthouse. I haven't done anything but look up family okay. court records. Let you go. Let, relax. You have no right to detain me to stop me to do any of this stuff. She has every right to record right now. I want my phone. You're not going to get your phone. I want my phone. You're not going to get your phone. Take a seat. I already told you how this is going to work. I want my phone. You're not going to get it. You are taking my phone. You're That's an illegal your phone. search and seizure of my phone. Search? What is yes. a search? Tell me what a search is. Tell phone. me what a search You're is. You're withholding my Tell property. Me what a search is. You're searching my phone. How am I searching your phone? Am you I going through your property? Your, you are holding so my phone. Know you're, you're you don't even know what it's talking about. Yes, I don't even know. You look up court okay. records. Yes. This is an absolute joke, yes. guys. Is this how you press yes. up against people? We, we don't need everybody else. We, need we have done nothing wrong in here. Uh -huh. uh, I need your name, please, sir. You're a witness. My name is Joshua Seymour. Seymour, do you have a case in the in here? Can you spell it for me, please? Thank you for. Uh, by the way, you broke my finger. Look at look at my finger. I'm not going to talk to you any further. That's fine. Joshua Seymour, can you spell it, please? Joshua, can you spell your last name? For me? Okay. So I have her phone. Mm-hmm. We got a call from from no, uh, court out saying that he's taking the picture. He has Stop my phone. Stop interfering. I want my phone. It's a journalistic phone. I'm doing good. research in here, and he has my phone. He is withholding my phone. Okay, I got that. Turn that off, sir, please. No, sir, I'm not sitting off. down. He has okay. my okay. phone. Will you show up? Get that. Turn that off. Take a picture. Okay. Sir, turn that off. He's being cooperative. What are you doing, man? You hey, I'm not recording phone. anything. I have every right You're to have my phone. Being cooperative. Is this how you guys are going to push up on everybody at the courthouse? And hey, bud, if you're going to be our sheriff and vote for it, this stuff needs to stop here in Santa Clara County. Stop pushing me around. Why are we getting harassed at court? Number. I'm fighting for my, number. my child. Huh? Okay, I don't need this crap. They touched me. They broke outside. your finger. Sir, How is this even possible for you people to do? I'm going to the crap for boss and have you guys fired. This is ridiculous. Members of the public should not be treated like this. This is ridiculous, though. Her finger's fucking broken, man. Is that appropriate? She's a mother. Fighting That's for fine. her divorce and for but her family, I'm she doesn't even be treated like that. He's recording. I told her numerous times, stop recording. Okay. Let's let's FI him, and if he wants to leave, he's free to leave. I'm not going anywhere. I said if you want to leave, I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I am assisting him. him.